Once I visited a grandmother friend of mine, the both of us love flowers. Well, actually, the orchids in the home was what sparked our friendship. On this particular visit, we were discussing the news of the weekend. John Mahama came up. I don't remember what exactly he said or did, but whatever it was got my grandmother friend so upset. In her words, she said she felt like smashing the radio set. With what strength, I wondered. I mean, love him or hate him, John Mahama is back in the news. Luckily, he wasn't the most exciting news item of the week. I have better stories that would drive you crazier because they drove me nuts. At a Siakwa, for example, some six students assaulted their religious and moral education teacher. Guess what? He is dead. I I'm sorry. At Kumasi Lagon, what is supposed to be a statue of the Opimsu Otunfo said to the second has united the nation in humor, outrage, and praise, actually, for competence and extraordinary dexterity or skillfulness. This week, Ghanaians say they are upset with the indiscipline and bullying with sirens on our roads. Shockingly, those who lead the charge in breaking the law are those who are paid to make the law. In fact, they are fed. They are clothed, they are entertained, they are chauffeured around by a tax city. And when they even as great self, if you want to see the way, see the year, not just say, if last year. I mean, our taxpayers' money, our tax city eh, is what we used to do. We pay all these charges only for those we employ to ensure sanity, to turn around and to quote Bernardino Kokuable, to normalize, uh, normalize stupidity. If you are part of them, eh, today, you and I, Caleb Gouda, are me, no separate back page. <laughs> Welcome back, people. Uh, my colleague in the city newsroom, Michael Ogbodu, filed an excellent report that has left reasonable, patriotic Ghanaians upset. What we should do, crab you. Why do they work with um, those things in front of them, the sirens? It doesn't make any sense to me. It's very annoying. Um, I feel like I'm a nobody. When we are all supposed to, we are all, part, we are all living in a, a country and then you, you are in a traffic and you are sweating, you are in a hurry, everybody is in a hurry. So then why do you turn on your siren and then pass just like that? Two turn of sirens by vehicles permitted by law and those without authorization is seen as disturbing the peace of road users and pedestrians alike. This has become a common feature on our roads, especially during rush hour. Generally, the siren is used to respond to emergencies. It is the standard rule to disregard the traffic laws while attending to emergencies as a necessity. The convoy I saw earlier, it looked like that of Ian Walker, the British High Commissioner to Ghana. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just asking, I'm just asking. Like, my visa hasn't been approved yet, so me and Kano can say, and I, every day, we say Ghana beyond age, and so, yes, yes, Kenya. This is not an Aisha Huan logic like you heard. Michael, right? Like you heard Michael say, the laws permit some things, but we are looking at the abuse here, even by persons who are not permitted. Just because they have V8s and a siren, these days, the lawlessness has become so normalized that even when Alachatrotro have siren, they want to bully everyone. But you know, we have a very professional police force with a compassionate and forceful IGP, right? You know that, right? Yeah, long before Michael filed this report, this was a joint press conference in August 2018. He addressed the press. This joint press conference is intended to address the growing misuse of sirens by certain individuals and institutions in the country. The practice of illegal use of sirens poses a huge risk
to unsuspecting road users, not to mention a disincentive to our collective fight against noise pollution. However, the developing reality is that several other public and private office holders and individuals illegally mount sirens on their vehicles to aid their movement, thereby bringing serious discomfort to other motorists and pedestrians. The general public is henceforth alerted that the police MTTD, in collaboration with the Enforcement and Compliance Unit of the DVLA, have been empowered to either impound or arrest any driver or vehicle during these routine road checks. This directive is effective immediately. Who said she are? Hmm? Who, who said she are? Who said she are? By the way, <laughs> I know some will be writing BEC. If you go and write this English because you heard the IGB say this. In cases where they do not have sirens, horns constantly blown in traffic, much to the annoyance and irritability to road users. <laughs> At best, you will get negative 12 for mechanical accuracy. I don't even know what that means. But because the safety of a nation and its sanity thereof is not judged by how eloquently its IGP speaks, let's focus on other things. So the IGP gave this directive. The general public is henceforth alerted that the police MTTD, in collaboration with the Enforcement and Compliance Unit of the DVLA, have been empowered to either impound or arrest any driver or vehicle during these routine road checks. This directive is effective immediately. Hmm. Effective immediately, pa. I would have said L-M-A-O, but I don't have enough of the A, so I don't say that thing some. I don't. But... Time has proven that IGP's directive didn't travel beyond the conference room. In fact, I won't be shocked if his own officers listened to him and laughed. Ah, we are putting on siren to beat the traffic. Just to go and buy a coffee broke man and return to cool off her. What's it here? So, dear IGP, <laughs> as your tenure is almost over now, <laughs> what power will be your legacy in this Amagana? Is it a look Azugu mosquito net or the kidnapped girls? Maybe the langas who beat a policeman and seized his own land. Maybe that one. Or the young people who are shot dead by police officers and framed as armed robbers without any accountability. IGP, is, is that it? Why are they, mum? You force why? Ghana for mum Yeah. The interesting thing is that the second speaker of parliament, the uh, second deputy speaker of parliament, Joe Weiss, called on police to arrest fellow MPs who abuse sirens in traffic. He made this call in November last year. He made this call when the transport minister briefed parliament. It turned out that as of October 30 last year, 11,159 crashes had been recorded nationwide. So the wise Joe's, Joe Weiss thought that the recklessness that led to these crashes, some of it was inspired by the recklessness of some of his colleagues who otherwise often are referred to, who otherwise often refer to themselves as honorables and demanding same title from people who see no relevance in their honorable title on their lives. Well, here is the conclusion of the matter. My outrage is that we have normalized stupidity. Forgive me. We have. Because you can't tell me that allowing so-called big men to cross and disobey traffic regulations with impunity is part of our underdevelopment. Because if they will run the red light, they will also steal money. I'm telling you. Finally, finally, I mean, if your father or your, your mother picks you from school with his or her V8 and uses the siren or the shoulders of the road, just tell him, Daddy or Mommy, Bernard said I should tell you to stop normalizing stupidity. I mean, knowing Ghanaian parents, the best they can do to you is insert ginger into your backside. But see, there is good news. In Manchester, a Ghanaian woman did that to her Ghanaian child.
her own child, though, and she was, she has been arrested. That story on citynewsroom.com has over 18,000 shares. It reads in part, let me give you a few. Abba Hagan, 40, was arrested Thursday and charged with one cruelty to persons, third degree assault, impairing morals of or endangering a child and disorderly conduct. Yes, yes, you. It's a crazy world indeed. Seriously, though, please stop abusing the sirens. Now, every day you are rushing ahead of all of us, but we don't even see what you are doing. Media today, from what a friend calls rodents, let's move to the roads, Ankasa. The people of Iowa so West Wogan constituency say driving on their roads made overnight thanks to the by elections that sold violence is like paragliding in Koyo. Just a very smooth. Now, with regular maintenance, asphalted roads should last between 15 to 20 years, okay? But in some cases in Amagana, Maimu, after two weeks of construction, some of the roads begin to look like Kanzo. <laughs> the what you want some. See, this report my colleague Niyama Ama put together demonstrates this. Road transport is the most popular form of transportation in Ghana. Day in and day out, new roads are being constructed across the country while bad ones are being fixed. But the quality of work done by road contractors is usually tested, especially during the rainy season. This is Echo Morgan Accra. The road that connects Hacho to Adboba looks like this only a few years after construction and after maintenance works barely six months ago. I'll tell you about Kumasi Lagos story shortly, okay? <laughs> KNRC people, no offense. It's good to be associated with the best, right? Especially how KNRC lecturers, a certain department, this own their own. But this particular story I want to see. It really got me troubled. It was urinating here, and then the we guys, I mean, uh, uh, took him to that place. They took him to that place. They did everything to make our colleague teacher to survive. But what death can do, life can have no control over it. So, and then the next day, he called me around 12.41 a.m., Friday on the 3rd. May 2019 called me to pray for him and after the prayers we had a little conversation then uh, the next morning I had a call that the man has come so these we guys made their intention to beat him and kill him your religious and moral education teachers a teacher in this case wants you to stop defecating in the school, in his backyard, stop smoking there, stop stealing his farm produce, and you assault him to death? Hey! Well, like you heard, the teachers say they run shift with the weed smokers, like, and they want mass transfer, but they go to work in the morning, and they are, in the evening, then the, the weed smokers come to, to work as well. Anyway, they say they want mass transfer, and it's like a form of like, mutiati. Uh, I, I don't know <laughs> if you saw the bandana the woman who was crying in the home of the teacher was using to wipe her tears though. It had the leaves all over it, pictures of the leaves all over it. I mean, honestly, this story left me absolutely devastated. The good news though is that Mr. Apiatu's men have so far been able to arrest five of the six suspects, right? Which is good for the family. It deserves the justice as the soul of the deceased does to. Every weekday at 8 p.m. City Newsroom brings you analysis of the major news stories of the day. In-depth, comprehensive, and researched. It's one hour of local and international news from 8 to...
Welcome back to Backpage on City TV. My name is Caleb Kuda. So one other sad story that added up to this week's list of sad stories was the shooting to death of the Dafia Mabusi Isa constituency chairman of the NDC. It happened in Jang. There's a bridge. Just after the bridge, four men cross us, armed with four guns and four torchlights, pointing directly on me. So I stopped. The moment I stopped, then I heard a slap at my left side of my ear. Then I heard an echo sound, go, 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 three times, and I accelerated. How you be got, down, got here, I don't know. It's indeed a heartbreaking story, regardless which party any Ghanaian supports. The police say they are investigating. The NDC says this, they suspect foul play. But our thoughts and prayers are really with the family, as we hope, like always, and pray that the deceased and those who survived him will be served justice. Now, there's been reports of fire outbreaks in different parts of the country. In the Western region, specifically Second D, the Office of the Administrator of School Lands and Land Valuation Division, it got gutted by fire. The building is nearly 100 years old. Young Kotin Kotia, one of the institutions said they want to get parliamentary approval so that Omube Jiri, all buildings that are more than 100 years old. And I'm going to say, ah, when the ceiling of the more than 800-year-old Notre Dame got gutted by fire, where did you hear anyone say they are going to pull down old buildings for whatever reason? I'm on Ghana power, and our leaders are so serious about side calls. Oh, old Parliament House, they said they will pull it down. Richard Sky almost cried on it. Over, he cried and cried. But no, they broke it down. Tell it, our sense of history, dear, unless it's about renaming, you know, rebuilding is never part of that. But there were more fires, in fact. And as a man can say, some three shops, including a popular coast store and a mattress store shop or depot, got burnt. We hear firemen got there late and the locals had doused the fire by the time they got there. So they got angry. They couldn't salvage anything. They vent their spleen on the firemen. They, they, their point was that someone meant them. <laughs> I mean, this is pa SON. You see, I, I don't think attacking firemen is the best way to go. I mean, next time, if there is news of any fire in your area, do you think the, the firemen will mind you? Eh? Anyway, in connection with all these fires, the, the CID boss has invited the NDC chairman to come assist with the investigation because according to them, some prime suspects they have have told them that Mr... Uh, for some of uh, mastermind some of the fire outbreaks you had in that leak tape if you did earlier. So, yeah, the CID boss, as part of all her priorities, is going to keep for some of our bread. So, no, so, so. Anyway, this reminds me of a town called Krokoshe in Amasaman here in Accra. Some irate youth there brutally assaulted a policeman in a video that went viral. Now, the police returned there in their words to do confidence building. Confidence building reminds us of all of us of Mr. Azugu, right? Anyway, don't go me, don't go me, confidence building. They got to Krokoshe. Cro <laughs> I tell the girl there, nobody is there. Apparently, they had deserted the place for fear of reprisals. It was basic, basically to build confidence. And with interactions we've had so far, Looking at it from the police perspective, it's been very, very fruitful. We also want to use this medium to tell 
especially the male residents in this town who have fled, to come back if you know you did not take part in the illegal assault of the police officer. Commander, I'm not sure if we have legal assault and illegal assault, but yeah, some of the women spoke to my friend, my colleague here in the city newsroom, Duke. We have a lot of problem here. Even all the land has been scattered on land gas. And we have been reporting, reporting, reporting. They will not come at the right time. When they will come, maybe someone is hurt. Maybe someone is being cut in and wounded before they will come. And some of the police in Amasama has been attacked and they don't want to say it. No. The same voice has been beating them. Oh, Charlie. It's sad. Now, <laughs> Citizen action and civil disobedience there is good, okay, but attacking ECG officers like we saw in Wager sometime, policemen, firemen, teachers, it's not, 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 not. Back to um, uh, Saman Kese, though, some stuff at the government hospital there reminded me of my childhood. You know that thing when you see an aeroplane fly across the sky and we all scream, Elupre, Elupre. Yeah, that was the exact feeling when they received the first supply of fly zipline deliverables. <laughs> Nice one there, Dr. Baumia. You got people really excited there. Now, as a proud number nine by Bess, who loves Ghana, I consider myself an Asante by association. I am a proud one. And there is one account proverb I really identify with. But to it, face falling down. Basically, that means a child of an account does not deserve disgrace. Let's take it like that, pardon me. Well, a statue of the king of Ashanti, or tomb for said to Z second, was unveiled at a lorry terminal. And my fellow countrymen were upset with what they saw. Apparently, Yenu Anum Kumasi Legonfua built it. I think the statue doesn't really look like a tool for himself, but I think it's just something to symbolize his achievements for the Asante state. Now, in, in one of the stories I read, one of the sculptors said, those who say they don't like the statue don't know their king well. In fact, he said they should look at the statue from the frog view and the bird's view. Well, 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 I don't know what frog and bird view is, but it appears even Kumasi Legon people themselves are not impressed with the work of the sculptors. They issued a press release to the effect that, uh, to that effect, uh, one, two, people said it looked some way, like the press release itself, people say it looks slightly incompetent. Let me take you, let me, let me take you through that very quickly, right? It says, our attention has been drawn to publications on various media platforms to the effect that the statue of our revered chancellor in Asante Hene, Otumfo Oseti to the second, erected at the KJT Lorry Terminal, was produced by the Department of Painting and Sculpture of this university. We would want to clarify the issue as follows. One, the contract to produce Otumfo Oseti to statue was never awarded to the Department of Painting and Sculpture, KNUST. And two, they said the project was undertaken by two lecturers in their individual capacity. I mean, if students go outside and represent their schools, the schools claim them. In this case, two full lecturers have done a sculpture and you are disowning them. You claim they are not, the contract was not awarded to the department, but it was to the, the, the lecturers. By the way, if the contract was given to the department, is it the building that's going to do the sculpture or is the human beings that are going to do it? It was quite confusing. but. If you look at the press conference, the press release very well. They released two. The first one said Otun for Ose, and they forgot the tutu. Before they brought another, and remember, they didn't do the sculpture well, so they brought another one just say, I don't want to Away from Kumasi Legon, Legon proper experienced a sad attack on his students. 
the near fatal attack on Benjamin Osei, a level 400 student along the Pentagon James Top Nelson Road has however triggered conversations on the need for management of the university to act. Benjamin Osei is currently undergoing treatment at the 37 military hospital. The incident was received with much concern from students of the university community, forcing management of the university to convene an emergency meeting aimed at addressing security challenges facing the university. It's all wonderful, uh, Legon Popper. But uh, let me end on a rather exciting note. So, John Mahama has been visiting Manchagbona, and people did something interesting. See? Returning John Mohammed Stone to him, they said they regret voting for Nana Ekufuado, but some other people say, Nana Ekufuado, we are some Shia, meaning if we didn't meet you, like we would have unmet ourselves. See? Yeah, Nana Mikutama, one also Kutama, and so Nana Wadaroma, and a free a church, a free a church, I says, Adaroma. Well, that's all we have time for. Oh, I forgot to tell you my assignment from last week. In Money Africa, actually, I apologize. Will you believe it? Unbelievable. We'll continue next week. But thanks for watching. As always, do want to find me on social media, Caleb Kuda, Facebook, at Caleb Kuda, Twitter, email, calebkuda at gmail.com. My name is Caleb. Have a good time. <laughs>